All right, welcome back. This is M Dog. As promised, we're gonna do a guide to the basics of bottom or feeder fishing here at Mosquito Lake. I may throw a lot of information at you on this video. We'll see how this goes. Um, I'm just realizing I don't think we have a bite indicator on this rod. So I've kind of tried to throw together some rods getting back to as close to what would basically be not the very beginner rods, but rods you might unlock fairly early. And so the goal of this video is I want to show you a little bit about what basic bottom feeder fishing will look like and then as you transition to actually using feeders and ground bait what that will look like for you as well um, let's see what we have on so we're going to cover some baits to be using i'll kind of show you my three favorite baits for starting out here at mosquito they're all very easy to uh, to get and um, and then we'll just talk about feeder fishing in general, how you set up your rigs, what gear to look like, look at, and then uh, we'll finish up with some spots. I always like showing this spot first right here at the dock because day or night, you can catch fish here. This is one of those spots that I don't feel like really ever dries up entirely. And so if you're fishing at Mosquito, you can't find the fish, make sure you're at least trying here. Oh, we just had a fish get away. It's one thing about these small fish is we're gonna run the risk of missing them at times. Check your rods. When you're fishing at Mosquito or anywhere where you're getting really small fish on, you're, uh, you're always running the risk of, uh, of one not setting your bite indicator off. So I guess that's one thing I can show you here just to start off with. How do you check your rod to see if there's a fish on? Well, if you just saw the line on this rod here, there is a fish on and I can tell because the, the line dropped. And that means the fish got on the hook and starts swimming right towards me. The other thing you do is you pick up your, your rig and you press R. And if you get that notice that says now the reel handle rotation speed is selected automatically, that means there's a fish on. If you hit R and it gives you the choice of, if you hold R down and it gives you the choice of uh, choosing a uh, real speed, then you know there's not a fish on. So as you've seen so far, what I'm doing here is I'm using three different baits. Let's check this one. There's not a fish on here. We're using maggots. We're using good old regular worms. And we're using pearl barley to try to target the bream a little bit. And with the maggots and worms, what we're doing is, let's go ahead and press Y and tighten up all three lines here. So hopefully we'll hear it. With the maggots and worms, we're just throwing, you know, 30 to 50% right along this shore, trying to keep it fairly close to the shore. With the pearl barley, we're trying to get it in a little bit deeper water to see if we can catch some bream. And so we're kind of sending it straight out. All right, here go the maggots. Let's see what's on maggots. Oh, this is actually a pretty good sized fish here. At least has a little fight into it compared to our line. Yeah, it's a nice little gibble. So with the maggots and the worms, a lot of the fish you're gonna catch are gibble carp, crucian carp, perch, common roach. And this is just gonna be your high quantity of fish. You're gonna be bringing in lots of fish. And that's okay, because it's going to help level your skills up. The markers, in other words, the fish that have this green check mark, are going to give you some silver. Not a lot, but a little bit. And that'll be good. Now, let's look at the baits real quick. I just showed you what we're using. Um, all of these baits are fairly easy to get. Let's see what's in stock right now. So worm, you can purchase for 30, for, uh, 30 of them for 1.8 silver. It's about as cheap as it gets. Now, ultimately, I'm going to recommend you buy a shovel and you dig for your worms. You can have as many worms as you want as long as you purchase a, a shovel. Look out. Now, now, this is interesting. Sorry to get derailed here, but you know we often complain about stock. 
but you can actually purchase mayfly larvae in the store at Mosquito. Mayfly larvae are really good to use at quarry for char and lake trout. Even burbot will bite them, but it's not ideal for burbot. But it's interesting that those are in, in stock right now. The other thing I was going to show you, those maggots. 30 maggots for 2.4 silver. And maggots are great early on, even later in the game. Now, if you scroll down to pearl barley, you say it's a gold-only bait, okay? Don't spend gold on pearl barley, though. What you want to be doing is purchasing a shovel, which only costs 38 silver. So with some of the things that I talk about in terms of getting cafe orders and just grinding out these early fish, one of the things you want to prioritize is purchasing a shovel. Uh, and so that's going to be something that you do to get your worms. And also, that will start you along the journey of leveling up your harvesting baits. And you can get points in harvesting baits by digging up worms a long way. I think all the way, for me at least, I stopped getting pretty consistent points when I was around 30 to 35%. But you harvest worms and you harvest red worms, and then you also early on can prepare bread as bait. Now, bread is another good bait option. It's not one of the three that I'm using right now, but it really is. Don't worry about making potato cubes. Potatoes are going to catch way too big of carp and stuff for you at this level. You don't want to do that. But look what comes next, making pearl barley. So if I go down here and go to pearl barley, all you do is you buy a bag of pearl barley from the store, the grocery store, and then you make pearl barley. Pearl barley will be a great bait for you for a long time, and I think targeting bream for beginning players and veteran players like myself is a great option for a long time, and pearl barley is one of the ways you can do that. All right, let's check see if we have some decent fish on, and let's start transitioning um, Right now, on all three lines, there's a crucian. On all three lines, we've been using basic bottom rigs. Okay, so, and I'm kind of all over the place here, but basic bottom rigs is the first thing you're going to do when you start feeder fishing. And so, as you feeder fish and you get these high qual quantity of fish spots, you will level up your feeder fishing to the point where you'll be able to use Patternaster rigs. And so that's when, uh, in a sense, the next level of bottom fishing will really happen. So in the beginning, you're going to be using simple bottom, bottom rig, but it won't be long. I don't remember if it's 15%. I don't know. It's not long, though. You'll be using Patternaster rigs before you know it. Okay? And let's... Uh, let's set up a pattern oster rig so you can see what that looks like if you pull up your rod at this point hopefully you figured out how to put a reel on there you see we're using a lacerti lacerti is one of the early reels you know you'll save up by a lacerti pretty early in the game i'm using cheap line just to kind of give you an example of what you might be using now here's an important thing here you see how our line is less strong than our reel the reason why we do that is if something breaks, we want it to be our line, not our reel. We've, I've seen a lot of new players with lots of broken reels. And I don't know that that's the new player's fault. It may be that just good advice is not being given by some of the community around this game that's talking to new players. It seems like there's a culture right now of taking risks, pushing it. You should always, especially early in the game when you have these cheaper less quality reels you should always have line or a leader that's going to be uh, weaker than your reel and your reel should always be weaker than your rod again until you get to high quality once you start buying like four star reels then yeah you might have the option of overloading your line a little bit having line that's a little stronger than your reel um, but remember that's going to cause damage faster so more repairs so there's a time and place for that. But in the beginning, please, if something's going to snap on your rig, make sure it's your leader or your line. And it, right here it says rig, basic, bottom rig, okay? The first thing you're going to be able to do is switch to a Paternoster rig. Once you've, once you've gone through a, f a few fish and leveled up your bottom fishing, 
you'll switch to a Paternoster rig. Now your whole screen here is going to change. You're still using the same reel and line. You can put your bite indicator right back on. In this case, it's the cheap bells. But now you're going to be using a feeder. Okay. So uh, we'll put this starter feeder on. It's really cheap. It only weighs 15 grams. And then ground bait. This is where the fun begins. You can make your own ground bait that will attract the fish. Let's put that, uh, what were we using? A 14 hook. By the way, for, for low level players, I like these Simmons Happy Hooks. I mean, there's a lot of options. The blue Siberias are okay. But if you look at the quality of hook, I, I seem to have pretty good success with these happy hooks at low levels. So I've, I've really enjoyed those. And then you put your maggots back on. Now we're going to throw this line back out. Again, about 30% just along that coast. Actually, I like to do it a little farther than that typically, but this is fine. And then we'll tighten it up. And now we have a Paternoster rig using ground bait in there. Now, I've, I put ground bait on there. If you don't know what ground bait is or haven't gone through the process of using ground bait, this is what I would recommend you doing it, do in the beginning. So you see here, you go to ground bait. This is how you make it. You have to at least add a mixture. And a lot of people do recommend just leveling up ground bait by just adding mixtures. If you just put crackers in there, you can make it. And then you'll have just a cracker ground bait. It'll track some fish. And it's very cheap to just buy crackers, as I'm about to show you. So you can level up your ground bait. Eventually, with ground bait, you'll not only be able to do your own custom stuff, but then you'll start getting recipes for Crucian Gibble Carp Mix, Roach Mix, Carp Mix, which you don't want to do carp mix early, but later on you'll come back to that. And then what I love is when you get into these four here, Bream Mix, White Bream Mix, Tench Mix, and Eyed Mix. Four fish that are awesome to target. All of these ground baits work really well. And so this is kind of what you're working towards, but early on, it's going to be a long time before you can do those. So you go to ground baits in the tackle store. Again, ground crack crackers is one of the ones you can use from an early level. This is my alt account, so I can't even use most of them yet. You can do semolina. You can play around with different mixtures, but I think the ground crackers is a great base. So we'll purchase three of those. But then go down to additives. Yeah, you could just make it with ground bait, but why not add at least one or two things that's going to be that extra punch and really attract those fish? Well, if you look at the what's in Bream Mix, two of the things in there are fly maggots and millet porridge. Well, you can use those from the very beginning of the game. So I usually will put those in early ground baits as well. If you want to go the last extra step, you can purchase an attractant. Now it starts to get more and more expensive. The more stuff you put in your ground bait, the more expensive it is. But if you're just doing a few stacks at a time and then catching fish on those, on those ground baits, you get 20. Every time you make one, you get 20 ground baits. So it's not that expensive and you're gonna get that silver back on how it works. So I think sunflower oil is probably my favorite. Some people like caramel, but I like the sunflower oil early on. So, once you've bought your ingredients for ground bait, and let's go back out and see if we've caught anything on our ground, on our Paternoster rig. Looks like we have. So let's see what we've got out here. Okay, so our first fish on ground bait was a Chinese sleeper, but it was a marker, so that's good. Let's throw this a little farther this time. Still along the shore there. And then we'll just kind of rotate this so it's a better chance of getting the indicator. I don't like when the bells are messed up like that. I always have to like reposition it. There we go. Now everything's straight. All right, so to make your first ground bait, again, click on ground baits over here or scroll down. Go to the first one. You wanna add crackers. And if you did what I suggested and got fly maggots and porridge, you can add those as well. Go ahead and make it. Or if you went the extra step and got sunflower oil, I think this is a really good all-around ground bait. Every time you make one, as long as you're making stuff that's close to your level of ground bait, you're going to get points. We got 0.2 points. We're almost to 15%. And you'll notice that at 15%, not harvesting baits, sorry, ground baits, at 15%, we get our second level components. 
So we have basic level up to 15%, and then at 15%, we can start using pearl barley, feed, wheat, cheese, and egg, as well as milky cream attractant. So a lot more stuff we can play around with at that point. So I really like ground baits. I think you do get your return of silver in the increased bite rate, increased ratio of catching fish. So that's why I use ground baits. Let me go to my more expensive rods here and take a couple of these uh, feeders off so that I can um, put together a couple other Paternoster rigs for you. So we'll put that bite indicator back on. Here's one of the new feeders. These feeders are a little more expensive, not something you need to do early on, but later you might want to get the more expensive ones. And here's some of that ground bait I was telling you about. Ground crackers, fly maggots, porridge, and sunflower oil. We'll add that. We don't, we're not using a leader on this one. We're kind of testing different things. We'll put the size 13 happy hook back on. And this line had just regular worms. Let's pick that back up and we'll throw this right along this shore once again. This video is going to be a little longer than most of my videos are, but we're trying to cover a lot of content to really give you an understanding. If you are starting out and you're interested in feeder bottom fishing, like I have been, I wanted to give you a little bit of information. We put that same ground bait back, ground bait on. Now I want you to notice I'm putting a I'm putting a leader on this. Okay, leaders are not expensive, and the reason why I'm doing that is I'm using a Hercules 40 reel. 7 kilo max drag. Well, if you notice, my line goes up to 7.5. So technically, my reel could break before my line did. So I'm a little nervous about that, if I, especially if I'm a new player. It is expensive to replace reels. So what do I do? I put a leader on. The 6.4 leader means that the weakest part of my entire rig is now my leader. If something breaks, in most cases, most situations, it's going to be the leader. And that's good. Leaders cost very little silver to replace. Reels, on the other hand, you don't want to have to be replacing reels very often. Let's put the pearl barley back on. And let's see. The thing about bream fishing, and you'll learn this if you start targeting them, they are much more active and you get the bigger bream at night. So kind of still in the afternoon here, the sun's shining. We might not see a lot come in on that pearl barley, but we're going to try it. So one thing about this spot is I'm dragging the fish over that boat. That is not ideal. So to, 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 to make it where you don't have to do that, all you would have to do is just kind of change locations. Just change angle. So like for example, you could set up all three rods down here on the dock. And then you would just pull the fish at a different angle so that you're not dragging them over the boat. Let's see what this is. Another perch it looks like. And let's again, even down here, I feel like you actually get a better casting angle as well. So a lot of times when I fish down here is I will just set them right here on the dock. I think that works pretty good as well. Okay, so let's talk about gear real quick. Again, I'm trying to fit a lot in. And, and, and if I need to, I can do shorter videos just t touching each thing individually. The other thing is if you want to learn more, come hang out with us on stream. I love helping new players and and a lot of those new players end up being experienced players and then they come back and help me because there's a lot I don't know still as well. Let's talk about gear. When you first start feeder fishing, the first and cheapest rod you can get is going to be um, the Sorrento. Back in the day, I fished with three FD-130 5 kilo load capacity Sorrentos. So you're looking at $41.80 a pop, unless you get one of the cheaper ones, but you might as well just get the longer one. It helps you control a little bit uh, bigger fish. I don't know. Maybe you argue. They all have the same load capacity. Save four silver, maybe you get the shorter one. I don't know. It's, it's up to you. It's not a big difference. And you probably are going to be putting like either a spark on there. I don't even know if there really is another option. I mean, the Spark is so much cheaper than the Li Libra. Um, and then Lacerti is what you're saving for, but I, I wouldn't put those on the Sorrento necessarily. So that's going to be your Spark and your Sorrento is going to be your first combination. But pretty quick, you're going to want to upgrade that. And I get a lot of people asking me, should I upgrade to the very next level? Or should I, um, should I try to skip a level? And my overriding 
overriding uh, point of decision making when it comes to these kind of questions is I think you should do what's fun. So um, I really like the Asteria. It goes all the way up to eight kilo load capacity. So maybe you just get two Sorrentos and you float fish. And then for your third feeder, you go up to an Asteria. Uh, and then of course with that is when you probably want to get to the Lacerti and upgrade to there. And that really should be, that gear should be enough to get you through Mosquito. You could even use that gear at Winding all the way to Old Berg. I think when you're getting to Old Berg is when you start talk, thinking through like, okay, what am I saving for? If I'm really into feeder fishing, what is going to be my next purchase? I personally think that is a time when you might consider skipping over a couple of steps. My favorite feeder rod in the game uh, until you get to the really expensive stuff is this Fortuna feeder 420. Look at this jump. You go all the way up to 19.5 kilos. And for a long time, my favorite reel to add to that is actually the Sabre, the Sabre 60. So that just shows you that if you get that um, if you get that feeder rod, you can that will grow with you all the way up to Saber 60s and even beyond. And now we not only have the Saber 60s, but we have the Sputnik Pro 6000, which is out of stock here. You could do the 4000, but I, I like the 6000. I think you can get this at either Winding or maybe Old Berg is where you'd have to get this once you get to level 12. But this is a nice reel. I kind of like this uh, as much, if not slightly more. You see it's a three and a half star reel, slightly more than the Sabre 60, which is a three star reel, but they're close. I've used Sabre 60 so much, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to say not to go with those. And so you'll see down here, let's look at, uh, we'll see if we have any fish on, and then we need to wrap this video up. Um, I guess I'll quickly just talk about some spots other than this spot, but, um, oh, there's a silver bream. So we're out of uh, ground bait. We need to add some more ground bait to it. That was on maggots. So you'll see on this one, we have the Asteria with the Lacerti. So that's one fairly good early, you know, feeder rig you could use. This is the Palmer with a Hercules. Again, I just went over the, the stuff I recommend. As I've come back and leveled up, I've tried different rod and reel combinations. There's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. The ones I told you are just kind of my preference. And let's see if it's uh, late enough in the day that we've gotten a nice bream or something. Oh, uh, this is the earthworms, never mind. The pearl porridge, pearl, uh, porridge is what we caught that last one on. So this is a, pr a fatty little fish here. It's a nice little crucian. By the way, make sure that you are checking cafe orders. I would even say in, early on to get silver, you want to target cafe orders. If you see there's a Crucian carp order, then just put a bunch of worms in there until you fill that order. I mean, that's 12 silver just for six Crucian carp. That's good early money. Um, you could target roach. You know, we see the, the 56 silver here for getting seven roach over 749 grams. Now, that's a little big for, for early on, but, but it is possible. So... Um, check your cafe orders and, and do it that way. All the silver we've caught in just a few minutes of fishing, 10 silver. If you're just starting out, that's actually some pretty good silver. So you can make money at Mosquito. You can grind through that early fishing, get your skills up, and, um, and get to a point where you can start getting that good you know, next level feeder gear. And that's what I recommend doing. Now in terms of spots at Mosquito, we're going to have to do a different video to get more in depth on spots, but I do like from the dock or actually uh, clubby recently had a video where he showed casting from this little beach over here. Um, he showed how you could catch really good bream here at mosquito out of the same hole that I'm casting into from the dock. And that's a really good suggestion. The sooner you can start getting good at targeting specific fish. So I think he was over here casting like in this direction down into this five meter hole. But the sooner you can get good at targeting fish, the better off you'll be. Now for all of the crucian and gibble and all the other stuff that you'll find in mosquito besides bream, you don't have to go into deep holes. Just find spots. Um, there's actually some spots right around there where there's, you can almost see it from here. 
but there's that little plank that's in the water. You just want to kind of go around Mosquito, find spots where there's lots of stuff in the water, and then throw your either float rods or your feeder rods with, you know, into those areas with your maggots and worms, pearl barley. I think those three baits are just great. But bread, a lot of people use bread here, uh, red worms. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but... Uh, that's what I like to do. Let's wrap this video up and please come by if you have questions. I hope this has been helpful just to give you the, the basics of what you're doing um, on bottom fishing. Once you get through Pattern Oster Rig, you'll start unlocking all the other rigs as well. I end up using Loop Rig all the time. Once you get to Loop Rig, to me, that is, uh, is, is my favorite. Now everyone has different favorites, but on my main account, I've mostly used Loop Rig and Feeder Rig for the big carp. But uh, all of them are worth looking at, and they're good at different times. But anyway, again, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks again.